Today, some really fun stuff. I'm here at my favorite kite surfing beach and I'm gonna showcase some autofocus mm. tips and techniques for sports action and wildlife with Nikon Z8 and Z9. We're gonna go through my hybrid autofocus settings uh, and showcase just what this camera is capable of and how to get the most out of it. Well, hey everyone, it's Hudson. This week I'm coming to you from one of my favorite places on the planet. This is the, the Kite Beach at Savi Island. It's a place my family and I have spent a lot of time over the years. The kids have basically been raised on this beach hydrofoiling. And the reason I'm here and bringing you here is I'm gonna have you look through my Z9 as I talk about the action and wildlife autofocus settings that you wanna think about using to get the most out of your action and wildlife photography with the Z8 and Z9. Now, last week I talked about the older Nikon released mirrorless cameras, both the APS-C in full frame, the Z6, Z7, Z5, Z50, Z ZFC, all those cameras, and how to use their autofocus system, which is slightly different. So this week we're gonna go into the nuances of the big dogs, the, the Z8 and Z9. You get to look through my lens while I'm working, and I'll do some B-roll showing you which button I'm hitting uh, and we'll photograph some action and I'll show you how I've over the years come to use this magnificent autofocus system. Uh, this has been something that's been requested by a lot of my workshop participants and a lot of the new people that have jumped to the Z8. So I'm happy, happy to bring it to you. So, you know, Without much further ado, I can see my friends are already setting up even though the wind's light. This is a place where the wind comes up every evening and I can see up around the bend, the other way on the river, the wind is coming. So let's get out there and we'll do some photography and maybe afterwards I'll do a little kiteboarding myself. All right, so right now you're looking through my Z9. I'm not hitting a button at all. It's my 100 to 400 millimeter lens. My friend Jason is landing his kite on the beach. The wind's up a bit. Uh, and I am in my shooting bank A. I hit my I menu to show you that. And my custom settings bank A. You can go into my setup videos. I have setup videos for the Z8 and Z9. They're very, very close, very similar. You'll realize if you've been through those setting setup videos, which you really should have done, that there are these custom settings banks and shooting banks. And they're like sort of four bookmarks of different places in the menu. And right now, I'm in my standard shooting bank, my standard custom settings bank. So this is my kind of everyday shooting mode. I'll hit the I menu to get out of there. And we're just looking at the world here, single frame, manual uh, mode, and I'm at auto ISO. You can see that this 3D autofocus that I have chosen, if I hit the I button again, you can see I'm in autofocus continuous, so it's tracking subjects, and I'm in my 3D area mode. I like to use the I menu to access this because when I go into AF area mode, it also shows me my subject detection options and I can choose from those. So right now I'm in human, I can go animal, I can go vehicle, I can go automatic, which would look for people first, then animals, then vehicles. But I'm gonna choose human because we're, we're photographing people out here, kite surfing and wing surfing. There's my friend uh, Walker right there who's quite an epic kite surfer. And you know, I can pick him up with that 3D tracking square and it's gonna look for faces and eyes, torsos. As he comes around, it'll, it'll recognize that there's a head if he gets closer to me. There it is, boom. And I can fire off, I'm in single frame right now. This is one thing that you can't easily just switch when you're working with your camera, uh, except via recall shooting functions hold. That's the only kind of memorizable thing. So when I'm in my standard mode, if I suddenly want to shoot multiple frames a second at a faster shutter speed, say a bird suddenly comes in my frame, I have this unique to Nikon Z9 and Z8 in the mirrorless world, recall shooting functions hold, programmed to my function three button. And when I hit that, you see it just flips to a faster shutter speed, wide open aperture, auto ISO still but I'm at 20 frames a second, and I can photograph Walker going by this barge. I'm actually taking a whole series of him right now, and there's no blackout at all. That's something else unique to the Z8 and Z9. Very, very cool stuff, all right? So I use this 3D tracking because it, much like subject tracking override in the Z6 and Z7 and Z50 type cameras, allows me to pick which of these subjects matters to me and lock them. Except what's different is it's still looking for faces and eyes. There's my buddy Drew. 
we'll get a shot of his eyes. Boom, I just fired off a few frames, all right? Everything's moving kind of slow. When I'm shooting action in sports that's not moving very fast, I just generally hit that function three button. It throws me into the fast 20 frames per second raw files, faster shutter speed, and it's ready for action. When I'm really doing a dedicated wildlife or action shoot, I'm actually gonna go into my eye menu and I'm gonna switch into my action custom settings bank and my shooting custom settings bank. And what that lets me do is have that hybrid autofocus mode that's unique to the Z9 and the Z8. So it puts me into a wide area focusing mode, all right? So let's look at that in the eye menu. And that's still AFC, but instead of 3D, we're now in wide area. And we still have subject detection, but it's only looking for our subject inside that box. If it's outside that box, it's not looking. It's just focusing on that part of the river. Put Walker in the box, boom, it's looking for him, all right? Now, the cool thing is that lets you, if a bird or, you know, say a kiteboarder is doing aerial jumps right in front of me, coming from left to right, it's tough to pick them up. I say, oh, they're gonna be on the left, pick them up on the left. Walkers riding into the scene from the left, I can say that's where I wanna pick up my subject. It's really great for fast moving, erratic action that's hard to get with that small little 3D tracking box. But it also allows you, you know, to pick one subject from another in those types of situations. Here's my little friend who's learning to ride. He's 14, I think. You can see it's picking up his eye, but if I really wanna be able to track him all over the frame, I can hand that wide area picked up subject off to 3D tracking with a simple button press. So I've programmed both my lens function two button and the function three button on the camera body to be AF area on, 3D mode, and AF on. So at the same time, it flips you from wide area into 3D tracking, and simultaneously, it hits the autofocus on button for you so that, you know, there is your subject that sees it in the box. I press and hold the AF on button. It locks on Luis's head. I press the lens function two button. Now it's a 3D point that moves anywhere on the frame. It's got him locked. That's the hybrid method. It's fantastic for picking up a subject moving and then handing it off to move anywhere in the frame. All right, so I use that all the time, particularly for birds in flight and fast moving action. It's just phenomenal for that. You know, here comes my friend Walker back into the scene. Let's see how we can use that as he's coming down, moving a little faster, closer into shore. I can zoom out with the 400, make him a little more frame filling. I've got him in that box, but as he gets closer, it gets harder to keep him in that box and I feel a little more constrained. So all I gotta do is hit that 3D button, boom. I hit the lens function two button with my thumb and now, I'm firing away. Oh, you know what? I'm in single frame still. That's one of the bummers with this camera is you actually have to physically flip it. And I'm gonna go to 10 frames a second right now. You actually can't program that into the banks, the shooting banks or the custom settings banks. So once again, I've got him in the box. I'm picking him up. I'm gonna, ooh, he blew it. Oh, well. That's a, that's, there you just saw me make the mistake. You know, you flip your modes and you could well forget that you're still in single frame mode. There's my friend Adam. So I'm gonna lock him into 3D tracking. It's got his face and fire away there. All right, I'm actually firing frames at 10 frames a second now. Here comes Walker, he's back up. I'm gonna lock him off, move it to 3D tracking with the lens function button. So I hit AF on while he was caught in the wide area, handed it off to 3D tracking with my lens function button, and I'm actually firing frames all through that. No shutter lag whatsoever. All right, so if I were to summarize, all right, in the hybrid mode, in your action bank, if you use my setup videos, it's gonna put you into wide area. You pick up your subject in that nice, big, easy to capture frame. You use whatever button you've programmed to be 3D area mode and AF on, to lock it off in 3D. Whoa, that was cool. Oof, he's really working on some stuff. 
and that lets you track it all over the frame. It's like I said, particularly handy for those of you who love to photograph birds in flight. Okay, so last thing I wanna talk about is that situation where you've got maybe a complex background and say a bird lands in the nest and there are leaves all around and these auto area modes are getting a little screwy for you. They're picking up things you don't want them to. Well, let's say you're in that situation. You've been photographing birds and all of a sudden you want to capture a bird that's on the nest. I'm gonna pretend that this channel marker over here is the bird that's landed on the nest. If I press my function two button I have that program through that same recall shooting functions hold that we did in our standard mode to get to a faster frame rate and a higher shutter speed. I have it programmed here in my action mode to simply flip from wide area autofocus into single point autofocus. You saw it didn't see Walker come through at all. It's not a smart mode, it's a simple autofocus point. If I hit that channel marker with that, move around the frame and come back, it's still locked off on the channel marker. This is perfect for when you want to shoot a stationary subject and you just want to lock it off. One more press of that button and you're back into your action tracking mode with its subject detection. You can hand it right back off. You're done with that again, you let go, you hit the function two button, you're back to single point. It's just really, really, really powerful stuff. You know, if you want to learn more about all of that, just run over to my Nikon Z9 or Nikon Z8 setup videos. Those are linked, of course, in this video's full description. All right, so I think you can see that while, you know, the earlier Nikon mirrorless cameras were certainly capable with action photography, the Z8 and Z9 really bring a new level of sophistication to that game with their 3D tracking and their complete lack of blackout while you're shooting. It does really make a difference tracking and, and keeping all of your frames in focus while you're shooting action. It's, it's incredible. And I can't urge you strongly enough, you know, get rid of that dynamic area autofocus from your repertoire. You know, this is a, a game where you're either in auto area autofocus or you're in 3D autofocus or you're in wide area autofocus. It's gonna do everything that you want and, and more and be identifying those subjects and then narrowing down to their eyes when possible. So it's just a whole new way of photographing and it's super, super exciting. It just about everybody I know who's gotten a Z9 or a Z8 into their hands on a workshop is just like, wow. I have people that were with me in Costa Rica last year that are already signing up for Costa Rica in 2024 just because that workshop in particular gives you such an opportunity to photograph wildlife and action on just a, a, a minute by minute basis. There's so much teeming wildlife and it's such a challenge that a lot of the people that were there last year with their Z6s, Z7s, D850s, D500s are so excited to take their Z8s and Z9s into those same rainforests and photograph the monkeys and birds and wildlife of the Costa Rican jungle. There's still a couple of spots for that workshop too. If you click up at the top, you can go to the page and learn a little bit more about it. Um, that's gonna be going next year. It's gonna be a ton of fun. We're also, just so you know, having office hours on September 5th. We're gonna just be back from the Coast Workshop, which is actually getting started as you watch this video or as it launches on YouTube. Uh, our Oregon Coast Workshop out of Newport, Oregon, which is gonna be a ton of fun. So we'll share some tales from the road, take your questions, big open free photography get together on Zooming YouTube Live. You can sign up for that by clicking the link up at the top or going into the video's full description where you can find a link to last week's video about the Z6 and Z50 and Z7 variants, the older versions of the camera and their autofocus tips and techniques, uh, as well as a chapter dot table of contents of this video to click around and rewatch any section that you want. And links to all the gear that I I use and advocate others using. And if you use those links, they really help me out. And I wanna thank you in advance just for being part of this whole approach in the scene community. Uh, your feedback, your requests for this type of video are what drove me to produce it. Your questions via email, via comments on this channel, via questions that you asked me during workshops really do drive the content that I put out there. And I appreciate you as a community giving me that feedback, liking, sharing, subscribing the channel. It just makes all the difference in the world. So thanks everybody. And with that, I'm gonna go out there and do some kiteboarding myself. So I hope you're all out there staying safe, staying creative. We'll see you next week.